Hey everyone, my name is Alicia and today we're going to look at how to create a correlation matrix and analyze gene expression using Julius AI. So below you can probably already see I have a data set that's in um, Julius. So and it shows gene samples, FPKM, title, tissue, and metastasis. So if you're wondering what FPKM means, it actually means fragments per kilobase per million map fragments. That is a mouth, mouthful. It is basically a normalization technique used to um, measure gene expression that accounts for gene, gene length and sequencing depth. So it normalizes the genes so that we can analyze each gene together because not all genes, as we know, have the same length and depth. What I would like to do, or what I would like us to do for this data set is first I'm gonna get rid of the metastasis uh, column because I don't want to use it in this specific analysis. Then I am going to focus on 11 genes that are associated with breast cancer tumor development. Split this data set into breast tumor tissue versus normalized uh, normal breast tissue. After that, we're going to create a correlation matrix. And then finally, I'm going to see how, see how gen gene expression is different with normalized tissue versus breast tumor tissue. Let's get into looking at the metastasis section and getting rid of that column. So we can ask Julius to remove it. So my next one is I'm going to now tell Julius which genes I would like to look at. So these were the genes that I picked for this analysis for this data set. So right now, like I said, I'm asking Julius to remove and filter the data frame to keep only these specified genes. This makes this data analysis as at least easier for us to handle because it is a very large data set. Okay, so now we're gonna split the data into two different data sets. Breast cancer tumor data set and a normalized breast tissue data set. So. All right, so now we're just splitting it, and we can watch Julius run the code. There we go. So now we have our two data sets. So we have, oops, the normal breast tissue data frame, and then we have the breast tumor tissue data frame. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run descriptive statistics on both of these data sets to kind of see how the characteristics are of our data set so that we can kind of get an idea on what we may see uh, when they are compared to each other. So, ooh. So we can already see that there are some difference in the mean values, which is to be expected with uh, gene expression in anybody. So for the normal breast tissue, we can already see that AKT1 has like a 52.55 FPKM. It seems that one actually, the largest is the CDH1, which is at 100. And I don't see, I think the lowest would be our, P, no, our lowest is actually the BRCA2. And we can also look at any of the other uh, max and min values, as well as the interquartile ranges. What I like to look at is the mean in comparison to the normal breast tissue for each of these genes, and then look at the mean from the breast tumor tissue data. So we can already see that there are some difference. For example, the TP53 at least has a mean of 28.955, whereas we have TP53 in the breast tumor tissue as 40.3786, repeating. So that just kind of gives me a generalized idea on what to be prepared for when we're analyzing this data set. So our next step is to make a histogram to see if our data set's normalized or not. So if it's a parametric method, meaning it's normalized, we're going to use the Pearson correlation, I almost said the wrong one, and then for non-normal normal data, we're gonna be using the Spear Spearman rank correlation. So let's check this first. It's gonna be a tight layout, which that is correct, Julius, there's going to be a lot. Because if you think about it, it's gonna be 22 different graphs if it doesn't overlay them, which I'm assuming it shouldn't. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, this is a lovely uh, graph, actually. I would like to open up the image in a new tab. Um, I'm not used to Mac, so Bear with me as I'm going through this. So basically, like I said, we don't really have a normalized distribution here. You can see it's very skewed to either left or right. So to confirm my suspicions, I'm going to ask Julius to run a normality test on both of the genes in between, between both data sets. So. so remember, if the p-value is under 0.05, in any of these normality tests, that means it is non-normal. 
some of them are normal and other ones are not. So for the normal breast tissue, for example, the BRCA2 definitely is not normal. The breast tumor tissue, definitely not normal. So that's going to make us uh, use the Spearman rank correlation when we're creating this correlation matrix. So now we can see we have our correlation for normal breast tissues. And I like this setup because you can, you can see how the, each gene is related to itself and then others, more likely others, because itself is it just going to be a one. So I also like it to make an actual visualization because it helps me see uh, how the relation is in terms of a color gradient. So let's ask Julius to create this. Okay. Great. Okay, this is very nice. And I can now show you how specific genes are related to one another. And we can see that there actually is a difference between the normal breast tissue and upregulation and downregulation. So, for example, if we look at um, AKT1 in relation to CDH1, they're about a uh, 74, 0.74 correlation. So when this is upregulated, this is also upregulated, so they're correlated together. However, when we look at the same one, here we go, you can see that there's actually less of a correlation between these two. And you can also look at the breast tumor tissue as a generalized observation and see that there's a lot of down-regulated genes or a lot of non-correlated genes in comparison to this normal breast tissue here. So me being the person that I am, I was interested in looking at gene expression and how it changes from the normal breast tissue into breast tumor tissue. So what I would like to do or what I'm asking Julius to run is going to be a Mann-Whitney U-test. Awesome. So we can see that there are specific genes that have that do show a significant difference in uh, the expression rates in the normalized versus the breast tissue. So what I'm going to have Julius do just is just to outline which ones are statistically significant for us. So I could just take them from here, but I'm just going to make Julius give us a nice list. Uh, it's, it's, it's just easier. So it looks like we have about four of them that are statistically significant from one another. So the next thing that we're going to make is a visualization to kind of show the statistically significant difference between them. So what I'm going to ask Julius to do is make a box plot, and then I'm going to have it create brackets around it in asterisks, 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 wow, uh, showing us how statistically significantly different, that is a mouthful, that these relationships are. So for ER, goodness, ESR1, we have a it highly expressed within the normalized tissue, which is shown in green, versus the tumor tissue. So in the tumor tissue, there's a statistically significant difference in a decrease in the expression rate. For the AKT1, we see an increase in, a, in expression rate, rate from normalized versus tumors. For MKI67, there is an increase in expression rate from normal to tumor tissues. And then P10, there is a decrease, at least for expression rate in this data set. Thank you for joining me on this wild ride as we explore gene expression between normalized tissue versus breast cancer tissue.